All right, this video is going to walk you through how to find the area of any polygon. Before we get started, we have to first of all talk about the strategies involved. You're going to try to find the area of this little wedge piece triangle. And then from there, you're going to recognize how many there are in the polygon based on the number of sides. So there are six sides in this hexagon here. So if I can find the area of this one yellow triangle, I'll multiply it by six, and then I'll have the total area of this polygon. Before we start talking about that, let's talk about these two yellow spaces that you see here. I've got a triangle and a rectangle. Which area is larger? Pause the video and then let's see what you think. Well, hopefully you remember in a triangle, uh, a triangle is found by doing base times height divided by 2. If I go 6 times 8 divided by 2, I'm going to get 24 for that answer. And on this other one over here, for the area of this rectangle, it's found by doing base times height. That's 3 times 8. And you're going to notice that, that the areas of both of these shapes are the exact same area. Now, you might be wondering why or how that might work, but this is how the, uh, the area formula is found for any triangle in the first place. If you have the base and you chop it in half and make it a length of three instead, and take this triangle and flip it up and over, you end up getting a rectangle like this. So essentially then, you may have also heard the area formula for a triangle is also known as one half base times the height. That's the exact same calculation as what you do when you do base times height divided by two. So if I know the base and chop it in half, or if I know this length is 3, and then multiply by 8, I can get the area of this rectangle, which is going to be the exact same area of this wedge piece triangle. Now, let's talk about um, also some other important pieces that are going to, going to be given to you in a, in a polygon. There's the apothem, which is drawn from the center to the other center of a side. That distance is called the apothem. Another distance might be given to you as a, what's called a radius, where you're drawn from the center to a vertice of the, of the polygon. And lastly, you might be just given a side length. But whatever it is, that wedge piece is made up of one of those three pieces. You might be given the height, you might be given half of the side length here that you're going to work with, or the radius that's involved as well with those wedge piece triangles. Now, as I talk about finding areas, just like we just did in that previous slide, if I have a triangle and I get out a ruler and I measure half that distance, it's going to be three. And then if I go straight up from here, I'll have the height, and let's say I measure that height to be 5.2. So if these are my two measurements, I know that if I chop this wedge piece in half and flip this up and over, I'll get a rectangle in this general shape right here. So if I simply just go half my base times the height, or this 3 times 5.2, I'll get an area of 15.6. That's the area then, when I go 3 times 5.2, that's the area of this entire wedge piece. Then from there, I notice that I have a hexagon. So if I take 15.6 uh, and multiply that times 6, I will get the total area of the polygon by then multiplying that answer by 6. And that final answer then comes out to be 93.6 units squared. So if I have a wedge piece that I chop in half and get 3 and measure out the, the vertical distance to be 5.2, multiply those two blue parts together, and then that gives you the area of the wedge piece times the number of sides, and you get the total area of the polygon. Now, again, it says up here the goal of every polygon is to know the half triangle dimensions these two sides right here, the, the blue sides that you see. If I can find these two sides, you multiply them together to get the area of this wedge piece times the number of sides, and you have the total area of your polygon. Let's try this next one here. What if I had an, uh, a side length of 12, and I chop it in half, and I get 6, and then I get out my ruler and measure it out this distance to be an 8? What is the area of this wedge piece? What you think is then you're going to multiply that 8 times 6 and get 48. That would be your area of this one yellow wedge piece and then times the total number of sides. This is an octagon, so times 8. So the area of this entire sh polygon is going to be 384 units squared. So this strategy again, if I can know my two blue sides right here, I can find the area of my wedge piece by multiplying those together. Then times the number of sides gives you the total area of that polygon. Now I'll pause the video on this next one here. Let's see if you can figure it out yourself. I've got another one here that's got 12 sides. And I've just taken out a ruler and I measured out its half side length uh, for this base, this triangle right here. Half of this base is 2, and the height of it is 10. What is the area of this whole entire polygon if those measurements are 2 and 10? Pause the video now and see if you can find the area of this one. Well, I hope you took 2 times 10 and got 200, or uh, 20. And if you take 20 times your 12 sides that you have here, you'll then end up getting 120 uh, I'm sorry, 20 times 12, <laughs> it gives you a total area of 240 units squared. I hope that's how you figured it out too. So again, if you see that you have a wedge piece that you chop in half, and its height is 10, and the half the base of that triangle is 2, when you multiply those together, that gives you the area of your one wedge piece. 
then times your number of sides gives you the total area of the polygon. Now, as you get more like questions that are like in your homework, you're going to be given a pentagon here first. In a pentagon, you've got to first of all figure out the central angle. Once I have that central angle figured out, then you can then move on to find the uh, missing side. You can know that right off the bat, if this is 8 and I chop this triangle in half, I can work with my tr half triangle that this side length here is going to be a 4. Try to see if you can find the measurements of these other three pieces here. Pause the video now and see what you can come up with. Well, I hope you just took some thought into this and noticed that there's a five-sided polygon. If you take 360 degrees and divide it by 5, you're going to get a central angle of 72 degrees. That is the measure of this big part of, the central, of this wedge piece. But then if you do the half triangle, you have to chop it in half to make the right triangle that we're going to work with. When you chop 72 degrees in half, you get 36 degrees. And then if you chop your 8 also in half, you get 4. If I know this blue piece right here and this blue piece right here and multiply them together, I will know my area of my green triangle, and then I'll multiply by 5 to find the total area of this pentagon. So if we're going to find the missing side here, we're going to have to use our Sogatoa skills. So Sogatoa tells you that you have an, opposite, an angle right here, you have a hypotenuse that we are not working with, but we are working with the opposite side and the adjacent side. If you remember Sogatoa, that T-O-A, is associated with toa, or tangent. So that means you're going to be doing a tangent of 36, and that's going to equal your opposite side 4 over your adjacent side x. This is what it looks like when you write it out. Now, whenever you have the number in the top and the letter in the bottom, you're going to divide. <coughs> Excuse me. And then from there, you're going to divide 4 by tangent of 36. Put that into your calculator, and you'll recognize that your the side length here is 5.51. Now you have both blue pieces. If you want to find the area of this green wedge piece, Take 4 times 5.1, 5.51, 4, 4 times and you'll then take that answer times 5 wedge pieces. So that calculation looks like this. You're going to go 4 times 5.51, that's the area of your green triangle, then times 5 of those gives you a total area of your pentagon to be 27.52 units squared. Hopefully you see the process. Find your central angle first. Chop it in half. Work with your right triangle. Then find your two missing sides. Using Sogatoa skills, this one required tangent. So therefore, we went back and we did tangent equals opposite over adjacent, divided and got our answer for x. Once we had x, we multiplied and then found the area of our wedge piece and then times the number total that were there, and we're done. Let's try it again, but now let's, instead of starting with a side length, let's say we start with an apothem instead. That means uh, the vertical side or distance here is 10 units long. All right. Pause the video now so you can fill in as many boxes as possible. All right. Hopefully you recognize that you had an octagon. If you take an octagon, eight sides, and divide that into 360, you will know your central angle is going to be 45 degrees. Now, in a 45 degree angle, you're going to chop that in half to work with this little half triangle. Chopping it in half gives you 22 and a half degrees. You're still trying to find this missing side over here. I know my apothem here is 10, so I just need to find this missing side right here. With Sogatoa, again, you're working with the opposite side and the hypotenuse. The function you use with that is tangent. So you set it up like this. You'll say tangent of 22.5 degrees equals your opposite side x over your adjacent side 10. This works every time. When you're given the apothem, you're going to be using tangent with this, this calculation, doing x over 10. Now to finish this calculation, since the number now is in the bottom, you just have to multiply 10 times the tangent of 22.5 and that answer comes out to be 4.41, or 4.14. Now that I have the two blue pieces, I can now find the area of my triangle by multiplying those together, and then multiplying by how many sides we have here, which is 8. When I do that, 4.14 times 10, and multiply by 8 total triangles, you get a total area of 331.2 units squared. Now that's you starting from the apothem. Those two parts you started from, the side length and the apothem, I would say are the two easier ones. The last one is the most challenging. If you ever start with a radius of 10, your goal now is then to try to find these two, blues, these two sides right here and here. See if you can pause the video now and see if you can find the, the central angle, chop it in half, find your half angle, and let's see what you can fill in for here. All right, now you notice that if you take 360 degrees divided by 6 sides, 360 divided by 6 gives you 60, deg 60 degrees for your central angle. And if you have a total of 60 degrees here, when you chop it in half, you'll have a half angle of 30 degrees. Now that I know that this is 30 degrees, I need to find the y value and the x value, knowing my hypotenuse value, or my radius, is 10. This is challenging, so now we have to set up two different problems. So in this case right here, if I'm going to start with trying to find the y side first, 
That's your adjacent side and hypotenuse to the 30. When you think about so ka toa, the C A H, that's the cosine that involves your A and your H. That's the adjacent side over hypotenuse. So when I set this up then, I'm going to go cosine of 30 equals my adjacent side Y over my hypotenuse side 10. In this case here, when you have the Y in the top and the number in the bottom, you diagonally multiply this out and you go 10 times cosine of 30. That calculation will then give you an answer of 8.66 for your vertical side length of this little half triangle. Now you've got to think of this next part here and try to find the X side. The X side is you trying to use the 30 degree angle, the opposite side, and the hypotenuse. That calculation with opposite and hypotenuse, when you say so ka toa, the so part is spelled S-O-H, which is your opposite side over your hypotenuse. If I do that, I'll be doing sine of 30 degrees equals X over 10. To solve this calculation, again, you multiply the 10 times the sine of 30. When you do that, you'll then end up getting an answer of 5. Now I have my both blue sides, and now from here, I can find the area of the screen triangle, and then finally, multiply my answer by 6, and I'll have my total area of this polygon. Here's how it works. Take your 5 times 8.66, that's the area of the green triangle, times 6, and the answer comes out to be 259.81 units squared. That is how you find these polygons. Again, the general thinking is find your area, of, find your central angle, chop it in half, find the two blue sides, and once you find the two blue sides, multiply them together times the number of sides that you have, and then you're all finished. One last little thing, though, as a side note, this is a special triangle. You also learned this in geometry earlier also. In a 30-60-90 triangle, the shortest side is always half of your hypotenuse. So if your radius was 10, I could take this short side and find out that it's 5, half that hypotenuse length. And then if you multiply it by square root of 3, that's the length of this side also. Try it in your calculator to see, make sure it works. It actually is kind of cool. If you take 5 times the square root of 3, multiply by 5, and then multiply that, that's the area of the one wedge piece, times 6, you'll also get an area of 259.81 units squared also. Pretty cool. So now that you've done this, hopefully you can now move on to the homework, and good luck with this video. Use it again if you need to look through how to do them, but all the calcul calculations are the same style as you work through them, and good luck.